and then I just jumped into the pool and then I was drowning. So that's awful. Yeah, it's, it was really bad. At that point of time, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna die. Like that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Welcome back to the second episode of S'more Talks. So if you guys are new here, my name is Moika. I'm Sarah. And we would like to welcome you. So for today's episode, Sarah, what are we going to be talking about? I think before we get to this week's episode, I want to remind those who haven't watched our first episode yes. yet, be sure to check that out. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that when our new episode is aired, you will get notified and you'll watch the episode. So Moeka, for today's or for this week's episode, we're going to be talking about sports. So Moeka, do you play any sports? I do. I like sports. I enjoy playing sports, but I am not a master of anything. Ah. Yeah. So I can play like anything that whatever you put there i would play <laughs> but i yeah but i'm not good at something but right now as of right now i play badminton and then uh that's about it actually <laughs> how about during school were you part of the school's team for any sports or uh okay honestly not really but i played netball for a uh, quite a period of time but i didn't like actually go for proper competitions Mm -hmm. it's more like just in-house in school type of thing but yeah that's all that's that's the only thing that i played what about you um i think when i was younger i was quite active in sports so i did play netball as well in school like you did and then um for some reason in school for sports day the teacher always put me for shot putt same, same, same. And javelin? Yeah, oh no, no oh, javelin, no, no. just shot put. Oh, okay. So that was strange. I mean, I'm not good at sports. I wouldn't say I'm good at sports, mm-hmm. but I do try my best to participate and all that, but I haven't won any medal or whatever la, for oh. my participation. Oh, I understand. I did shot put mm-hmm. and javelin and discuss. But I'm really bad at discuss. <laughs> <laughs> I would always throw out of the the lines you know and then for but the my best one was shot putt yeah i think, I think mine i was better yeah. at shot putt compared to other other right? field sports yeah yeah, yeah 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 it's i think it's easier i don't know in my opinion i think it's easier it's more like you just need to throw the ball you don't really need much technique compared to like discuss and yeah yeah yeah, and yeah. exactly you just throw it as long as you don't throw it o- over the boundaries which is not hard since it's such a Heavy ball yes. as well. Yeah. Do you swim, Moeka? No. <laughs> you don't know how to swim? No, uh, I don't know how to swim, but I... I Okay, I never learned swimming. Okay. But basically, I think it was because there was one time when I was in KL. I think I was visiting my aunt or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just jumped into the pool and then I was drowning. So... That's awful. Yeah, it's, it was really bad. At that point of time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to die. Like, that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, my life is going to end. But my mom came in to save me, even though she doesn't know how to swim. So from there, I somehow, like, learned... I don't know. Like, I guess because when you're drowning, you kind of like... Like, your subconscious... I don't know. Your hands just you're panicking, try to... panicking, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you just try to, like, move. And then from there, I started to be able to swim. At least float. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how to swim? Um, I always <laughs> tell people I know how to swim. Okay. <laughs> but uh, my sister and my husband begs to differ. Because <laughs> when we were younger, my parents used to send my sister and I to, you know, the MBKS swimming pool? Oh, yeah, yeah. I still remember the name of the coach who taught us. It was uh, Mr. Tio. Oh, okay. So he taught us swimming and we'd go like uh, every once a week. Oh. And then when we were in the UK, uh, my parents also sent us for swimming lessons and it was different from what it was like being taught in Kuching itself in the sense that the facility um, it was at Loughborough University it's Mm -hmm. somewhere in Leicester so they had the Olympic size swimming pool because the university is a sports university oh okay so we were, uh, my parents signed us up for lesson and we had certificates and all that to say that, oh, yeah, 
<laughs> she knows how to swim. But then, um, I don't know. I think people always say that once you know mm-hmm. how to swim, it's a muscle yeah, memory, memory skill kind of that you yeah. have. But I don't think I'm a good swimmer. La. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, uh, during the training that I got when I was in the UK, uh-huh. they did teach us how to do like, you know, uh, it's not survival swimming. What is it called? You know, when you're trying oh, to the- save... Somebody uh, else. Uh, oh, life, life, uh, life saving. Oh, yeah, life saving. Oh, okay, okay. Because I remember there was this one uh, period where they tell us to wear clothes to the swimming pool and then they'll throw you oh, wow. in the swimming pool in the deep end where you have to learn how to swim on your own with clothes, like proper oh. full-on clothes, as well as um, a scenario where you have to rescue someone in fully clothed. So if you're wearing jeans and t-shirt and maybe a cardigan, so you would swim in wow. those. But I don't remember much <laughs> of what happened because this was like back when I was 12, 13. Oh, okay. So that's like 14, 15 years ago. Oh my God, I sound so old. <laughs> oh no. So yeah, I mean, if you were to throw me in a pool, I can swim or float oh. to go to to shore. shore like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if it was like a professional kind of swimming, like oh. I, I'm not an Olympic swimmer, even it, though <laughs> I've had experience in Olympic sized pool. It was so huge, Moika. I just remember <laughs> that I hated going to the swimming lessons oh, because no. they'll make you swim laps. Oh. It's the entire way through. And you know Olympic size yeah. is huge. huge. So it's very tiring. And I have asthma. Ah. So Same. I think uh, you have asthma yes, as well. Yes, I have asthma. So it limits my athletics ability, and most of the time I use it in, as an excuse <laughs> not to participate. But you know, um, but yeah, people said that swimming's good for, for asthma. Yeah, asthmatic. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I just remember the daunting mm. memories or experience of swimming laps, even though it was for my own good. But yeah, but what I like most about training back in the UK is that it was mm. indoors. Oh. In Kuching MB- MBKS, yes. we book an outdoors. Outdoor, of course, yeah, you'll exactly. get tan and you're exposed to the yeah, sun. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think and that is my athletic ability. Like, I always tell people now to swim, but eh, not really. <laughs> but you actually do, right? I, I, mean, do, like, I do, I do. Yeah, okay, okay. I do know how to do uh, freestyle, backstroke, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, but, okay. you know, I don't, if you ask me to like properly swim oh. on command, I think I'll be like, no, I cannot <laughs> swim. I have asthma. <laughs> Okay, I think recently we covered the Sukma Games yeah. and then now we have the Para Sukma Games and before we move into that portion of uh, this week's episode, we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. As I mentioned earlier before, uh, we are going to be sharing about what it was like to cover Sukma, but mm-hmm. just to give a bit of a refresher on what went down with us in August. Sukma was on 17th until 24th August, right, Moika? Yes, that's right. So they had a total of 37 different sports at 50 different competition venues with over hundred, over 12,000 athletes from across Malaysia, including Brunei. So, Moika, who won Sukma this year? Jumbo! <laughs> Sarawak! Do you remember how many gold medals we won? 76. Correct. How about silver medals? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so Sarawak won with 76 gold medals, mm-hmm. 55 silver and ah, 70 okay. bronze. You remember, it was quite nerve-wracking because yes. the one in second place, which is the Federal Territories, mm-hmm. there were just shy of one goal. Yes. I remember you were at the media center, right, when yes. this was all happening. So can you share a bit what was it like to be in the zone mm-hmm. when all of this went down? That w- It was crazy. It was like, it is so memorable because you see... All the other reporters were all watching. I think it was ping pong, mm-hmm. and then it was the federal territories versus Kada. I, I don't remember. It was uh, basically another state. Okay. So obviously everyone was um, rooting for that other state, and then there <laughs> That's was. That's so mean, right? Yeah, it is very mean. And then and then there there was actually two. I don't know who they were, but they were from that state. So two of them were in the media center and oh. then we were all cheering for them as they were cheering for their own state. Mm. And then we were like, 
it was so intense. Everyone was like, uh, when when they lost, the other state lost, they were like, you know, like, oh, no, no, no. And then when um, federal uh, territories, like, when they lost, they were like, woo, <laughs> cheering up and down. So, and then at that moment, um, but it was quite a clear winner, mm. if, I, if I'm not wrong. Like, it, it wasn't, the point difference was quite big. So we already knew Kinda that, knew. yeah, it, there was a possibility. So um, when they won, when the other state won, then everyone was like cheering, cheering and then everyone was chanting and singing. And then um, there, I remember there was another reporter that called up uh, Dato Kar- uh, Karim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then and then she put it on speaker, and then she was like, "So is it confirmed, huh, Dato?" And then <laughs> he was like, "Yes, yes, confirmed." And everyone was like, "Woo!" Yeah, so that was very memorable for, for me. you. And it yeah. was your first time covering Sukma as well, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Like such a big sporting event. event. Yeah. I remember it was like a day or two before the final day where we had the closing ceremony. My dad came home. He was like telling uh, my sister and I, you know, very scared lah for Sarawak, mm. he said. Because usually federal territories, their go-to move, I don't know, maybe it's part of their uh, game plan is that they will always wait for the last day oh, to bag all of the goals. And if I'm not mistaken, during that, they had like, I think, 15 events and Sarawa only had like 10 events yeah. left. So if they won all 15, oh, Sarawa no. wouldn't have been able to catch up even if they won all goal for the 10 events. Because yeah. we were very close. I remember always monitoring the mm. middle tally. <laughs> yes. It's like uh, Sarawak 68, uh, Federal Territories uh, 65, yeah, yeah. and then Federal Territories would be above by one or two mm-hmm. different gold medals. And then it'll, it's like, you know, interchanging between Sarawak and Federal Territories. So it was yes. quite stressful. Yes. This is <laughs> speaking and coming from someone who is not playing in any sports. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As reporters, when we were covering it, it was nerve-wracking for us as well yes. to see how Sarawak was doing. Yes, it was. So maybe you can share a bit about, because I noticed that during uh, the Sukma period, you were always on the ground. Mm -hmm. While I on the other hand, I had to do more of the back end stuff. So I wasn't able to be on the ground as much as Mm -hmm. you and the other colleagues were. So I think you've spoken and seen quite a few athletes who won gold, right? Is there anyone who is memorable that you are so impressed by this young (laughs) <laughs> athletes mm-hmm. uh, I think the most memorable okay I think there were two one of it was obviously the one that went viral is, is it no pop no, no pop no power <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think that that I think he was very impressive I Jonah think, right yeah Jonah I wasn't the one that actually was on the ground interviewing mm. it was another colleague okay. but I was able to help with editing yes. so I think just watching that interview of how he was so patriotic you know you know it's like um how he chose to really fight for the state, yes. right? Fight. So I think that was quite amazing. But another one, another athlete that that I was on the think, interview. I know, I know, I know. Yes, you know who <laughs> it is. Yes, it's Elvis Presley, mm. not Elvis Presley. Yeah, it's a uh, his name is quite cute, interesting. <laughs> yeah. He's a small, tiny dude, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a small boy, and and I was like. When I so that was his diving. He was his his sport is diving, yes. right? So uh, when I first went and covered diving and all, watching all the different ones, and somehow he kind of like stood out to me. Why? Because, what made him stood out, more? I don't know. Be- maybe because he he's a tiny boy. I mean, th- okay. There's a lot of a lot of them from other states, especially I think he was from Penang. Mm-hmm. A lot of them were very young, like actually very young. So they were very small and very cute and then the only, i think he was one of the few that were smaller in size from sarawak okay. so i was like oh this is why he's so cute you know and but he's so good because um i think there was one dive he when he dived in there was i mean there were still splashes but there were barely any splashes mm-hmm. and i think that was like when the score came out everyone was like Woo! So, uh, yeah, so although he didn't win like as much compared to other athletes, but I think it's his um, aura that kind of makes him very, you know, likable. You, you, likable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to interview him. So we were able to interview him and then the coach and then his parents as yes. well. Yeah. And so I think hearing from the parents themselves, they were sharing how um, they only get to see their son like, 
probably once a year and because it's only for two three days training. the training yeah it's very hardcore and then um the mother was tearing up and then how how hard it is as parents you know you're not able to bring your son back yeah. to the kampong and then you're not able to see your son and actually it was the first time they saw their son compete this is summer. it yeah so it was i was like wow like you know what it takes to be an athlete it's not easy it's really not easy so i think yeah, he was an athlete that, that I really, that was very memorable to me, that I wrote a feature about him. Yes, yeah. and for those of you who don't know, yes. Moika actually won the article of the week. <laughs> so basically, UKAS, uh, they organized this mini competition for reporters mm -hmm. where they have the picture of the day or picture yeah. of the week as well as stories of the day and stories of the week. And Moika won with the Elvis yeah. article. Future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that was that was good, and that that's why I guess that's why it's also memorable, because <laughs> I also won with that um, feature as well. But what about you, Sarah? I didn't get to really interview anyone because mm -hmm. I was quite busy doing backend stuff for our team. Yeah. But I think, uh, like anybody else, I think the opening night was oh, yeah. very very impressive. Yeah. And then uh, actually, I went to the rehearsal. I think twice. Oh, okay. Because I, the first time I went, it was because Tato Sri Karim, uh, he went down to see the preparation, and then the second time I went and interviewed the performers. Oh yeah. Uh, it was from this one uh, Silat recreational group. I forgot the name. Mm -hmm. So, to me, it was really something. And mm. I know people have said that you know the opening ceremony was so much more hyped and better than. Yeah, uh, the others in which they actually compare it to the Paris Olympic, and mm -hmm. I thought this was very, 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 very <laughs> amazing. Yes, in the sense that you know, coming from Sarawak and having been in Kuching, we sometimes we don't realize the yeah. capabilities and the abilities of our people, the talent and the skills. And I remember that night. I mean, I'm a bit bad in the sense that I made you and our colleagues go home <laughs> early. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but the story is like this, guys. So, because the opening ceremony was open to public and they mm. gave out like over 14,000 tickets for free to the public. Yeah. So, there were a lot of people and Moika was already there early. So, he, she parked her car there. <laughs> so, it was uh, myself and two other colleagues. We coupled and parked somewhere. And then my dad and his bike. <laughs> he was our gojek man for the day. <laughs> where he brought us one by one on the bike to go to the venue because I know it was going to be really bad traffic because yeah. they closed down the road at about 3 so yeah, a lot yeah. of people because we initially planned okay Moika you leave your car there and then we drop our car or use our gra uh, grab to go there and we'll go back home with your car Yeah. but the reality of it was that other people had the same thinking you know yeah, like exactly. they even though they're not media or not official committee they mm -hmm. actually parked their car around the stadium mm. anyway so you know the stadium was really packed so i didn't want to go through the hassle of the traffic jams yes. going there that's one and then also coming back because actually i spoke to a few reporters who stayed until the end literally mm -hmm. the end of the night mm -hmm. they were stuck in traffic within the stadium compounds until two in the morning oh, trying crazy. to get out so i anticipated that that's why i told everyone <laughs> we're going home now we're going home now yes. but yeah i think uh, we stayed put to watch the fireworks and the drone show <laughs> yeah from the car the park yes. yeah from the outside but you know it's sometimes you have to think about the traffic jams because you know yeah. it, it's it quite is a bad. wise move yeah. yeah and we had macd after that yes so. we had macd after that <laughs> So with that said, we would like to... Welcome back. So earlier just now, we were talking about our experience, you know, covering Sukma. So Sarah, you know, I believe that in every sporting like competition, there's always going to be some sort of incentive for the athletes. Maybe can you share a bit about that? Okay, so... When the state government announced the incentive, uh, I was actually there to cover uh, the premiere. 
So when he said that, the, and my colleague as well, <laughs> we were there together. So with other reporters, obviously. So mm-hmm. when he said that for gold medalists, the state government was going to give fifteen thousand. Wow! I remember the room was just really loud with the wow. Oh. I mean, fifteen thousand is a lot of money for yes. gold medalists, and you have to remember that some of these athletes. They are competing in more than one event. Mm. So if they're really good, they will get gold. Let's say in all five events, you can't laugh five times fifteen thousand. How much? Oh, oh my dear. god! Oh, I would love that. <laughs> I know, right? So the second incentive is for the silver medalist, which is five thousand, mm-hmm. and then followed by bronze, three thousand. Mm. So the state government has fulfilled their promise. And the total amount of incentive that they given out to all of our Sukma athletes is a whopping, is it a whooping, a whopping, a whopping 1.834 million wow. ringgit Malaysia, Moika. Wow, that's crazy. That's a lot of money. But that's yes. not all, Moika. Do you know who got the highest amount? No. You don't know? So I'm going to share with you the top three winners who bagged Okay. Money <laughs> for the outstanding performance, and to be honest, I think they deserve it because yes, you yes, know, for any course. sporting events, they obviously go through a lot of training. Yeah. They are you know spending day and night, you know, mm-hmm. dividing between going to school, yeah, and also preparing for competition and honing their skills. Mm-hmm. Like you mentioned, you know, Elvis, his parents don't see him that much, yeah, because he's always uh, away for training and all that. So. The highest recipient for this incentive was a swimming star called Kelly Teo. Oh. And you know how much she got? How much? Almost her 100,000 ringgit moika. <laughs> you deserve it, Kelly. <laughs> you deserve it. So she wow. got 96,000 for winning six gold, wow. one silver and two bronze medals, moika. Can you imagine being that young and having that much money? Well, you could be the swimmer. No, I'm too old. <laughs> oh, I, oh, the yes. ship has sailed mm, from me, Moika, yeah. so I, I cannot join and I don't think I'm good enough <laughs> anyway. So the second one is actually Jonah as well. Oh, okay. He won 47,000 uh, for winning three gold medals and he also broke uh, a national record in athletics. Wow. And then the third one is Stephanie Ngu. Stephanie. Taekwondo? No. Wushu. She, yes, oh, Wushu. Wushu. She won three gold medals for Wushu. Wow. So I remember reading news about how they are going to spend their incentive money. And I mm-hmm. think it's really nice that they are saving up for their studies. Like Jonah, yeah. he got accepted into University of Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. UM. Mm-hmm. So he said that he's using it for his studies as well. Wow. And then as for Kelly, if I'm not mistaken, she said she wants to buy a car wow. and also treat her family. So, you know, it's nice to see that these young successful athletes are putting their hard-earned incentive rewards to not just to benefit themselves but also to share it with their loved ones you see Mm -hmm. which is very interesting and it's good that you know they're thinking ahead they also want to save it for their studies and not just spend i mean if i got 96,000 (laughs) moika okay i asked you first like what would you do if you got 96,000 what would i do (laughs) oh dear there's a lot of things i would like to do um but (laughs) okay realistically i would save like you know a Probably fifty percent. I mean, that. like so half that's of like that. Forty three thousand. No, forty eight thousand. Uh, forty eight thousand, okay. and put it into like investments, you know, okay. like so that it can grow itself, and then. What will you do with the rest? Well, uh, <laughs> a lot of things. Probably, <laughs> maybe trade in my car to a newer one. Mm-hmm. You know, um, actually, I don't. Uh, mm, that's not a lot. You said you want to do a lot with right. the money. Yeah, but then okay, honestly, and then, oh, of course, like my family. Uh, a travel probably bring them like travel wherever they have never been to in the world uh okay i guess that's not a lot but that's not a lot that's not a lot what what about you then (laughs) Ninety six thousand. i think first and foremost i probably give my parents ten thousand each so i still have Ah, to for myself i would save about twenty six thousand so i have fifty thousand to spend and i would probably get myself uh, a new TV. I want a bigger TV. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> a new TV, probably go out on a shopping spree mm-hmm. to 
upgrade and change my wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> and then definitely I would take my family on a nice vacation. Mm-hmm. So maybe as well, I probably treat my colleagues to food la. Oh, food only. <laughs> okay la, food and... Wow, well, you are shopping also. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll definitely buy the new iPhone. Oh. You forgot about that. Yes, yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, that is my top priority. iPhone 16 Pro Max. Yes. Yeah, I, so I, Apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably buy a new laptop as well. Like, oh, yeah. mine's already, I think, two years old. Mm. And you know, with, like, tech stuff, yeah. after a certain age, they get a bit slower and mm-hmm. all that. So I would definitely get a new laptop. Maybe, yeah, like laptop, phone, and TV. Oh, TV. And, and I already have an iPad. Oh, okay. So I don't want an iPad. You're set. Yeah, so I'm set in that. But yeah, I think... You know, 96000 is a lot of money. So I think, Kelly, you are one lucky duck. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it's uh, what you deserve after yeah. all of your hard work. Yeah, and for sure. you definitely showed uh, that you are an astounding athlete during Sukma. So yes. you deserve it. I think we also forgot to mention, Moika, that now is the Para Sukma. Yes, Para Sukma. So the Para Sukma is actually, I would say it's a bit less hectic as um, mm-hmm. the Sukma yeah. because they only have 10 sports yeah. and only have 1,200 athletes Ooh. and everything is centralized in Kuching itself. Right. Unlike for Sukma, it was in different division in Bintulu, Miri and all that. So mm-hmm. it's I wouldn't say it's a small scale because we have gone all out to prepare for uh, this event as well. But yeah. you know it's easier for us to cover because yes. it's all in Kuching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and you know, actually, there was there was one thing about these incentives, right? Where I saw like, and I heard a lot of people because you know, a lot of people that I know, like they know me as a reporter type of thing. So they're like, um, a lot. I saw a lot of people like bashing. You know, why did the premier announce like, like fifteen thousand? You know, the incentive before the games that would make the athletes feel like, oh, I'm just gonna work for the money. Type no, of thing. no, but that's the thing though. You have to look at it at, it, at a different point of view. Yeah. It's actually a good source of motivation. Exactly. Regardless if it's in sport or even at work. I mean, if your boss tells you that they're going to pay you 10000 yeah, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. work hard and achieve this KPI, of course you'll do it. Yes. I mean, then it's up to you what you will do with the money. La. So I exactly. don't think it's wrong to incentivize yeah. people with money in a sense that, you know, it's everybody loves money and yeah. you know everybody needs money for something you might not know what you want or need it for on the top of your head when you don't have that amount yet but the mm-hmm. prospect of having this reward obviously you would work hard for it yeah yeah it's not saying that people are blinded by money but exactly. you know yeah it, it's true and and honestly on, being on the ground you kind of see like all these athletes a lot of them are they're Very so humble right? and hardworking. Yes. You know, they're they're not trying to get the money. You know, to like flaunt it yes. or whatever. A lot of them, you know, they come from backgrounds where they're not the best background, yeah. basically. So a lot of times, a lot of them, they're like, "Oh, I want to give it to my family. Yeah. I want to help." That's why. That's why I mentioned about yeah. Kelly Jonah. They're all yeah. thinking about not just themselves. They want to give back to their parents, who obviously have supported them in their journey. Exactly. So to me, uh, incentivizing people it may be in the form of money or. I don't know, other things. Yeah. It's actually good. It's a driving force because mm-hmm. sometimes uh, it's natural for human to feel demotivated yeah. and you lose your focus. But when you have an end goal, not only you're getting your trophy and the recognition, you are also getting yeah. some monetary uh, rewards that you can use to do whatever you want with it. Yes. I think it's really good. And uh, I think we are very fortunate in Sarawak that mm-hmm. the state government is so... F- financially stable that yeah. they are able to provide exactly. such incentive for both Sukma and Para Sukma Yamoika. So the Para Sukma athletes will be getting the same amount as right. the Sukma one. So, you know, if you were to compare apple and oranges, it's a bit unfair to say that oh we are showing off or yes. whatever said because I think it he has been known that Sarawak wants to be a sports powerhouse. Yes, and this exactly. Sukma we are definitely proving that we are a sports powerhouse. Yes, let's go, Sarawak. <laughs>
So with that said, we would like to end today's episode here. Sarah, what are we going to talk about in the next episode? So in the next episode, we're going to take a spooky and scary turn where we'll share with you some paranormal experiences Ooh. that we've had. So be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell okay. so that you'll be in the known when our next episode is out. Until then. Bye-bye. See you. See you.